All right, so here's the problem that we have. So when I move it, it's actually making, you know, it's loose, but it's, it's coming from the idler arm. So I gotta change the idler arm on it. Hey guys, welcome back to Vios Garage. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. And today we're going to be replacing the idler arm on this amazing 1976 Mercedes 240D in a W115 chassis. Um, this is one of the things I haven't done. I actually replaced four tie rods on it. I haven't replaced the center link because it's still fine, but I want to replace this idler arm because it's causing some play and it's one of the really like most probably neglected items on the steering system of these amazing old school machines. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna start taking care of that idler arm here in a second. Here's the part number that you need. First thing is you're gonna remove this cover and I'm actually gonna be probably sanding it and repainting it in gold color um, and then once you do that then what are you, you have 24 millimeter bolt nut take these off this is gonna go out of the way and that way you can punch out these uh, bushings so I'm holding it from up top with 27 millimeter socket this guy once you loosen all this you can start hammering this out shouldn't be too super tight depending how rusty the car is but this one comes out this way the other one comes out that way and uh, yeah just uh, you can use a chisel carefully or like a brass uh, punch so sometimes you might get lucky sometimes not I was started hammering on the top one and just this hat came off so I'm gonna have a little extra work but this bottom one I'm just kind of grabbing it with the pliers and moving it back and forth carefully and hopefully this thing will come out here shortly it just takes patience okay so it's uh, really unfortunate but sometimes these bushings come out really easy sometimes not so now I'm just using a screwdriver and just hammering that out and it's uh, slowly coming out actually yeah Ooh. you know when, I, when you think that the job is gonna be you know it's gonna take 10 minutes it's gonna take a lot longer actually so never expect the easiest job even if it looks easy <laughs> yeah, now I'm gonna start to uh, keep working on this gotta change this guy out all right, so this one I have to just kind of hammer it from the outside or from the above. Okay, go ahead and take this guy out. Look at that. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, like I said, these can come out easily or not. It just depends. Now we're gonna clean this area, put silicone paste in there, install new bushings. silicone paste now and use that and just prep the area on the inside we'll keep it from any corrosion or rubber from going bad silicone paste is the best is the best rubber's friend we can say that all right here's the new bushing top one goes in it doesn't matter they're both the same so the way you install it, just straight and then sometimes you can push them by hand and in this case, this one I can't. So I'm gonna go from the top, use the rubber mallet and install it. All right, so the rubber mallet and just kind of start hammering on it. All right, so check this out. So I'm using the rubber mallet on top of that bushing and I'm using a regular hammer to hammer 
this uh, on the mallet. I guess, like I said, some of these can be tight. And then this one, also just kind of use a rubber mallet and hit it all the way on. So here's another tip. If you can't get one of these wishings in, you can put the bolt and nut together and tighten them together. That way they will, both bushings will get drawn in. So. All right, so there you guys have it. I'll show you everything connected, nice. Right, uh, we're gonna be installing new sway bar links in the rear. Right, this guy is pretty bad, actually making noise. So definitely gotta change that. Started preserving everything here as well. New versus old. Sway bar link is pretty bad. I wonder what brand these are. Gotta install new ones. I'm gonna transfer these washers back. All right, so also added the uh, silicone paste onto these to preserve the boots. So at the same time, we're gonna be changing these power steering hoses. This one's super bad. And I'll change this guy as well. The one goes to the pump. It's all wet right there. So we've got a new one right here. So that's the plan. I'm gonna change this bad boy. All right, so I cut out a section of a brand new power steering return hose. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and install it right there. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be like a quick swap. Take the old one out, or install the new one. All right, so you loosen this clamp a little to move this power steering reservoir out. That way you can get more clearance taking this hose out. Let's see if I can do it real quick. Just a new hose. It's gonna get ready to go on. There's gonna be some fluid leaking out. Oh yeah, it's gotta be fast. All right, so I lost some fluid, but it's okay. Here's brand new hose. Let's slide it on to that end first. All right, so here's what's going on. I'm changing this uh, power steering return line. So here's the thing. I had to disconnect the vacuum pump line right there because there's literally no space. Mainly because this uh, thing right here, which I'll show you, the horn had to get disconnected. I can't really slide my hand in there. But this right here is the clamp that I'm working with. And it was just in a horrible position. So whoever was messing with this, they didn't think of the future mechanic who will be working here. But uh, yeah, so now I'm about to take it off. I'm going to change it and install a new one on. One eternity later. So it's been about a week since I've been trying to get the correct power steering return hose for this amazing machine. And uh, unfortunately I've been having some issues and I want to talk to you about uh, all those issues. And uh, yeah, maybe you run or you've run into a similar situation. So I'd love to hear the story about, uh, you know, from your side. But yeah, so finally today I got the correct power steering return hose and I'm gonna install it on this car. 
All right, so as you can see, I started working on my power string return hoses, uh, that little one and this long one. Unfortunately, the problem is, so this is the original one on the left, all right, and the new one that they sent me from Pelican Parts on the right, and they're claiming that this is the correct hose for this car, which is not, because it's just way too fat uh, right there. It's literally like, if you try to force it onto the fitting, uh, it's eventually gonna kind of spread out and start cracking in that these spots. That's it's not a, a good thing. And you know, I contacted them and they said that this is the only hose that they have for this car, and they're claiming it's for this for this car, but it's not. Anyways, this is the original hose that came off of this car. All right, started having cracking, so I just decided to replace. It. However, I can't see the part numbers on it, unfortunately. Yep. So, anyways, I tried uh, contacting, like, just talking to Pelican Parts and seeing what they have for me or if they can order something similar. Yeah, but I didn't get no response for that. So, you know, I just went to local parts store and they will show you what I got. All right. So, this is the power steering return hose. Actually, it's funny. It even says that. And uh, this is actually not really that bad of a hose quality, actually. It's pretty, like, pretty much reinforced and really nice. And... This is really, really close, if not the same to the factory inside diameter. So it's pretty awesome. I'm gonna use this hose and about to install it right now. So yeah, uh, I mean, I do love this design. The Mercedes Benz does, you know, it's kind of like braided a little bit right here, but uh, you know, it's unfortunately, it's not really good for this car. I don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna have like wrong size hoses, you know, especially if it's, this is too small, you need like a bigger one. Yeah, because it's gonna cause it's gonna just cause it to uh, stretch out and eventually just probably crack in that spot spot where it's stretched. So you don't want to do that. However, we're gonna save this hose for some other old school bends because we, as you, as we all know, we work on a lot of them. So good stuff. This is gonna go on my shelf. All right, I cut this part to length. We're gonna go ahead and install it. All right, so you're gonna have to get underneath, from underneath to, you know, get to that bottom clamp. That's the easiest way. You just have to remove this uh, uh, horn. And then there's your hose right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that clamp and it's gonna be awesome. So this is that wrong size hose I was trying to install as you can see it's just it's just really not the right size all right so we're gonna put a little bit of silicone paste on the fittings right here and we're gonna install that little hose here in a second all right so replacing that hose is one thing so we another thing you need to check for is make sure that none of those hoses are rubbing against anything else or against other hoses that's really important it's eventually going to have another leak or a disaster so you want to avoid that so i'll show you how i check mine just so you can learn from me and probably like utilize the same stuff that i use all right so we got this power steering hose replaced right there that's a factory rubber grommet right there But now, take a look down there. You see that? It's basically touching this engine oil cooling line. So that's not good, all right? You want to make sure that you protect that. So this case, what you're gonna use is, you're gonna use something like this, just like a regular regular like rubber hose. You can use like a radiator hose and you just cut out, like a cut out right here, and then you slide it over. Which I'm gonna show you to you in a second, but it's pretty easy. You just slide it over this, and then it's never gonna, you know, cause any issues with your, with the rubbed hole or anything in your hoses. Yep, and that hose right there is also installed. Just got, I just have to uh, top off the power steering fluid. All right, check this out. This is how you do it. This is how you're gonna prevent any issues in the future, possibilities of leakage. Yep. So that's what you do. Now, I had to just remove this uh, vacuum hose out of the way a little bit, so I'm about to reinstall that back now.
All right, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, take care, and don't forget to donate to the channel. Links are gonna be down below. Thank you so much for all your support and everything you guys do. Take care.